Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to focus on anticyclones, which are what are known in geography as areas of high pressure. Now, as always, if you've been completing these lessons um, independently or being directed to use them and you're shielding or working from home and completing home learning, you have access to the lesson worksheets in the link provided in the description box below. So if you want to complete this video, while completing the worksheets, they are in the description box below for you to access them completely for free. Then it means that your work is really nicely laid out and it also means that you have all of the information you need to complete this particular lesson for your revision if you are studying GCSE Geography. So let's first of all think about what is an anticyclone. So like I have just said, anticyclones are what we call areas of high pressure. They are created when we have cold air really high in the atmosphere, so in the sky, okay, falling towards the earth. So that air is what we call descending. It is falling to the earth's surface, to ground level. This falling air increases the weight of the air pressing down on the Earth's surface. So as that cold air falls through the atmosphere or descends through the atmosphere, it becomes slightly warmer, resulting in what we call high pressure. Now, we can get anticyclones in summer and in winter. So in summer, anticyclones are given um, and provide us clear skies, so it is typically hot, sunny weather. We might even experience a heat wave. And there are no clouds in a summer anticyclone, so it does not rain or cause any form of precipitation. Whereas in a winter anticyclone, we still have clear skies. Um, we also have a typical sunny set of weather conditions, but it is relatively cold. Again, there's no clouds formed in a winter anticyclone because that air is descending, it's traveling towards the Earth's surface. So again, we don't get any form of precipitation, rain, hail, sleet or snow. And this is because that warm air can hold more moisture overall than cold air. So we have no condensation or cloud formation taking place. So then... Thinking about synoptic charts, now synoptic charts are weather maps that uh, meteorologists will use to obviously indicate weather conditions we are going to experience on a certain day or in a couple of days following on. So these are charts you see uh, BBC or ITV News referring to when they do give us the weather update and the weather forecast. So, what does an anticyclone look like on a synoptic chart? Well, there are no warm or cold fronts in high pressure areas. And if you've watched my previous video on depressions, areas of low pressure, you will see this presence of a warm and cold front. We do not have that when it comes to high pressure areas on synoptic charts. So when we have anticyclones on a synoptic chart, in the centre of the synoptic chart, you will be able to see a H, meaning high pressure. So when you see on these synoptic charts uh, an area that has a H in the centre of it, we know we are experiencing high pressure. Within an anticyclone, the winds should also be travelling in a clockwise direction into that high pressure centre. We have what we call isobars uh, surrounding that area of high pressure as well, which are marked by 1004 or above in terms of the number value of that actual air pressure. So these isobars are showing us the pressure of the air, that air that's, that's falling and descending towards the ground surface. If the isobars are widely spaced, um, to, the winds tend to be very light, uh, calm conditions are usually typically very common. And this potentially is something you will see when you're seeing the, the weather forecast being reported by a, a BBC or ITV. So you can have here um, a very simple uh, map of the UK with that area of high pressure sitting on it with your isobars indicated by those those white lines and you know it's high pressure because it has high or a H written in the middle. 
Now, like I said before, we can get both winter and summer anticyclones. So we're going to start off by looking at a, a winter anticyclone. So this is the picture you can see on the screen here. So during a winter anticyclone, again, we have no cloud formation taking place here. So there are no clouds present in the sky. So we have lovely clear skies, no clouds, meaning no precipitation. But in a winter anticyclone, we can experience some very low temperatures, some freezing temperature conditions, which can cause frost to form sometimes. So we can get some frosty conditions taking place in our winter anticyclone. But again, the, the winds are relatively light and calm and we have lovely clear skies as well. Now, if we then move on to looking at a summer anticyclone, so you can see on the picture here, we've got a lovely view of a beach and these people again are making the most of the lovely weather, this lovely high pressure weather system, this summer anticyclone, because we are obviously experiencing high temperatures, warm weather conditions, and that might even mean we're experiencing a heat wave. Again, like you can see um, in the, the atmosphere, in the sky, there's a very little cloud formation there. So we don't get any clouds in a summer anticyclone. We typically have clear skies with calm light winds again. And again, because we have no cloud formation taking place, we have no precipitation, so no chance of rain. So if we think about then, if you're completing the work on the worksheet, you will be able to see a Venn diagram. And we need to be able to basically understand the weather conditions and the similarities and differences between a summer and a winter anticyclone. So on the top of the screen, you can obviously see some information. Um, that applies to a summer anticyclone, a winter anticyclone, or both types of anticyclones. So I need you to put all of these into the Venn diagram. So if these conditions are experienced in a summer and a winter anticyclone, they will go in the centre of the Venn diagram. If they're only experienced by a summer anticyclone, they will go on the left hand side of the circle and not in the middle. And if they're experienced um, just in a winter anticyclone, they will go into the right hand side of the Venn diagram and that circle instead of in the middle. So can I give you one minute to very quickly put these characteristics, these weather conditions, okay, into the Venn diagram to show your understanding of the similarities and differences between a winter and a summer anticyclone. So at this point, we will check your understanding and I always ask my students to, to use a different coloured pen to mark their work so we can see if we've made any geographical mistakes and therefore we can correct them or you can just tick the ones that you've got right. So we're going we're gonna to self-assess your work now. So if we're thinking about, first of all, your summer anticyclone, in that left-hand side of your Venn diagram, you should have high temperatures and heat waves. Whereas if we look on the right hand side of the diagram, you've got very low temperatures experienced in your winter anticyclone. And we also have those frosty, icy conditions. But weather conditions and characteristics experienced by both a summer and winter anticyclone are we have no cloud formation, so no clouds. We have lovely clear skies as a result. We have calm or light winds. And again, we get no precipitation because that warm air can hold more moisture than cold air. So we have no condensation taking place, so no cloud formation. If we have no cloud formation, we therefore do not have any precipitation, no rain, no hail, no sleet or no snow. So now we understand the characteristics and similarities and differences of summer and winter anticyclones, we need to think about impacts.
the impacts that are caused as a result of summer and winter anticyclones. Now, some of these impacts can be positive, some of these impacts can be negative, and an impact is what happens as a result of something happening. And in this case, we're looking at anticyclones today, that area of high pressure. So if we start off, first of all, looking at a summer anticyclone and the impacts they cause. And again, for your GCSE examinations, you need to know some of these impacts in a relatively uh, small amount of detail. So first impact associated with a summer anticyclone is crop failure. Unfortunately, if we do not receive precipitation for a period of time, that means that that farmer's crops and the produce that they are growing begins to fail and die due to limited water. So we can have crop failure, which then puts pressure on food supplies and farmers also lose income as a result. Now then, if we then start to think about the actual temperatures we can experience in a summer anticyclone, like I previously said, we can get what we call heat waves, intense periods of very warm, high temperatures. And unfortunately, some people, some young children, babies, and also your elderly um, population cannot regulate their temperatures very easily in these types of warm conditions. And what that means is we have an incredibly high number sometimes of hospital cases and people being admitted to hospital due to dehydration. And unfortunately, we can have, in the very extreme cases, we can have a death as a result of these intense temperatures. Now, we can also have in a summer uh, anticyclone as well, due to these intense temperatures, we can actually have the tarmac on your roads beginning to, to melt and to, to basically turn from that solid form into more of a liquid form. So you can actually see sometimes roads and the tarmac coming loose from the road because it's been heating up and because it's black it will absorb more of that solar radiation and that heat from the warm temperatures and it will begin to loosen on the roads. We also have reports as well of, of train lines can buckle and buckling means they basically start to bend under these intense warm conditions. So again, we can get roads and that then leads to disruption due to the tarmac on those roads coming loose and being quite dangerous. But on the other hand, summer anticyclones can also cause positive impacts. Ice cream sales always go up, so the ice cream man is always delighted. And not to mention that people do go outside when the weather is nice. They experience um, wildlife, different environments. It improves their mental health because they're getting outside and they're completing exercise. So they are some positive impacts as a result of a summer anticyclone. But now if we start to think about a winter anticyclone, so those frosty uh, conditions that it can cause. Now winter anticyclones can bring with them fog conditions, so that mist due to that air descending towards the ground surface. And that can lead to reduced visibility. Visibility meaning it's harder to see. And if we have reduced visibility when we're driving, for example, that can lead to road traffic accidents. If the roads are, are icy or frosty, that can lead to traffic accidents as well, as well as people falling over and injuring themselves. And under these low uh, temperature conditions, these freezing conditions, we can have stress on our water pipes. And unfortunately, ice uh, will develop in these water pipes under these freezing cold temperature conditions, and it will expand the pipes and cause the pipes to crack. And that can cause leaks uh, underground, leaks in houses, for example, boilers, if they're switched off and the water does freeze in the pipes, it can cause your central heating system to, to crack and then you might have a flood in your house. So for this lesson, it's all about, you know, knowing what an anticyclone is, looking at the different types of anticyclones, your summer and winter anticyclone and the impacts they cause, whether they are positive or negative. So you do need to have a good understanding of, of winter and summer anticyclones for their impacts and also their weather conditions for your GCSE examinations. 
So, like always, please like and subscribe to my channel if you're finding these videos useful because it helps me get feedback to know if you're actually finding it useful. And if you are, I will see you in my next video and have a lovely day. Thank you very much for watching.